Good morning. Welcome to our little interview this morning um, where we're focusing on, for the month of February, heart disease, uh, how to prevent it, and some information um, available to you. So here we're in the CA, CE wing of the church with the hearts that Becca and the kids um, have done, so we thought this would be a good place to do the interview. So thank you for listening, and um, I'm Marilyn Cummins, and this is um, staff member Bonnie Ilhart. And we're going to talk a little bit about heart disease today, or a lot about it, and give you some information. And Bonnie's going to share her uh, personal story with us this morning. So we thank her for doing that. Um, heart disease is the number one killer, uh, particularly of both men and women, but particularly of women. Uh, in one year, last year, 395,000 women suffered heart attacks. The statistics aren't good for women in heart disease. They um, have different symptoms than men, and they do not, the statistics for second heart attacks are not even there because they, they usually don't make it um, to the hospital for, for treatment or help for that. So let's start out with talking about um, some risk factors for heart disease. What you can control, what you cannot control. What you cannot control is your age, your gender, and your family history but there are many things that you can control. Those being, if you smoke, if you're diabetic, controlling your blood, blood sugar, if you exercise, if you maintain a healthy weight, if you know your blood pressure numbers and you take your medicine, keep your blood pressure under control, and reduction of stress, that's the big one. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. So Bonnie had a, a little incident a couple years ago now and um, so I'm going to ask Bonnie to tell us if she would like to share um, what exactly her story is, um, how she dealt with it, and, and how she's doing now. So Bonnie, okay. yes. <laughs> well, thanks, Mel. And it's a real uh, pleasure and opportunity to be here and to share my story, which I think some in the congregation are aware of. Um, but January 27th, 2014 is a day that will live in infamy for me. <laughs> I had a heart attack, and it created a shock in the congregation when Pastor Kathleen shared that on the following Sunday. But to step back a little bit, I thought I was in control. Like Marilyn was just sharing, there are certain things we can control and there are certain things we cannot control. I knew I had high LDL cholesterol and I had very limited low HDL. So essentially my ratios were reversed of where they're supposed to be. But I thought I could manage it with exercise and diet. Well, I couldn't. <laughs> it caught up with me. Um, and my internist at the time strongly suggested I go on a statin. And I just did not want to. Um, just didn't want to take a drug. Mm -hmm. And found out that that, that was a mistake. Um, I had a heart scan back in, I think it was 2012, and there was no plaque in my heart. That wasn't the issue. The issue was the LDL cholesterol. Um, so anyway, I found, you know, I think that was the concern, is that I thought I, I could do some things. I knew my mom had minor vessel stroke, died essentially from that, but I wasn't as educated, as aware of the impact that heredity genetics does have on a person. Mm -hmm. So Bonnie, specifically, um, I think I remember the day exactly you tell me the story that Bonnie, being the ultra volunteer that she is, was um, volunteering at the Women's Center, right? That's correct. And she just had had lunch and she was sitting at the computer doing, doing Bonnie's thing that she's so good at and she um, felt some indigestion. Is that how you would describe it, Bonnie? Right. Um, indigestion, and, and like Marilyn said, I had just eaten lunch, and I was feeling a little odd. Couldn't quite put my finger on it. I was having a hard time swallowing and felt kind of flu-like, but not really achy. And at that point in time, I wasn't getting a flu shot, so I thought, oh, it must be the flu coming on. Well, I don't know, it was about probably about 12 o'clock. I can almost see the clock. All of a sudden, in the center of my chest, my heart went brrrr. I mean, I could li literally feel it racing. Mm -hmm. 
At that point in time, I went white, down to as white as this paper, all the way to the white of my fingernails. And the two gals that were around me said, are you all right? Oh, I'm fine. And Bonnie, I'm <laughs> tough, I'm in control. <laughs> and I said, but I think I'll call my husband and have him come and get me and, and go to an ER. Well, the racing continued and I called Doug. Just about that time, um, and we were on the second floor of this uh, Women's Center building where I was volunteering, Ken Janine um, came up the stairs and he was kind of the coordinator for the area that I was volunteering. And about the time that I had started volunteering several years before this, Ken had had a heart attack. <laughs> and I can still see Ken. He was mid-stride on the last step. He took one look at me and he said, what's the matter with Bonnie? Somebody call 911. About six hours later, the cardiologist said, tell that man he saved your life. <laughs> uh, 911 was there pretty quick and um, uh, strapped me up to a machine and said, you're going with us, we see some heart issues. And I'm like, heart issues? <laughs> I'm like, I need the picture of health, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, still, still somewhat in denial. But I think the thing to share is, I never had any pain, mm -hmm. absolutely no pain. Um, never any numbness, mm -hmm. um, shoulder issues like you hear symptoms of, of that are in frequently with men. And as I was sitting about a month later in the cardiologist's office on a follow-up visit, reading a magazine, and he talked about women's symptoms, and they were just exactly what I had. Mm -hmm. Racing heart, mm -hmm. kind of a nauseous feeling, mm -hmm. and extreme weakness. I could hardly pick up my hand. Yeah. Right. But never any pain. Mm -hmm. um, so don't don't think that uh, pain is a is a symptom that that's might that's very lead common. You. And don't we all see on TV for men, women that, that yeah. there's the clutching of the chest? And I remember when I worked, my husband being a cardiologist and working in the cardiac area, we never called it. Our, we would ask when we take a patient history when they would come in. Um, are you having pain? Because not everybody describes it as pain. Some people say an ache. Uh, particularly women, ones that I've interviewed or taken care of, they had fatigue. Lots of women are fatigued. We're CEOs, <laughs> mothers, grandmothers, we're busy, yeah. right? And we, um, the nausea or just, you know, very different. Mm -hmm. No pain down the arm. Mm -hmm. Very rare. Very rare. So that's something to look at. And 20 some years ago, they all the studies were done on um men and their symptoms and how to prevent it wasn't there wasn't much done on women because women didn't survive their heart attacks and um, a lot of uh, women would go to their OB doctor mm -hmm. they didn't maybe have an internist and no they weren't trained in what to look for that and you don't think of women having mm -hmm. heart disease so um, that's something very much to think about but Bonnie's story ended very well she um, you know recovered and she had some stents put in mm -hmm. and we're talking eight years later, here, here she is, and she just shared her numbers with me this morning, and they're down and they're, they're managed. So this is not to scare everybody. I think knowledge is power, and we want to get information out there because there's so much you can do to prevent it. And perhaps it's even, thank goodness, talking about being in the right place at the right time. Her co-worker um, Ken was there. He knew what to do. Perhaps learn CPR, which yeah. we've offered that, and we can do that again. Um, because there's definite things you can do to, to stave that off. So with that in mind, I'm just going to go over a couple of, I call them the Ten Commandments of Hearts, of, um, for a healthy heart, and I added one to this morning as I was thinking about it. So first of all, know what your risk factors are. Know what your family history is. Talk to your doctor when you go to see him. It's your appointment when you go to the doctor. So many people say, well, he only has 15 minutes or 20 minutes. But do your homework. Come prepared. Mm -hmm. Have your questions written down. Because even healthcare people, when we go to see our doctors, we get nervous and forget to ask the questions. And they do have a limited time. Mm -hmm. But again, it is your time. So write your questions down. If you don't, make sure they get answered. If they don't, ask again. The other big thing I would note, would say is, if you're on medications, bring that list of medications with you. Definitely. And know your medications. Know what you're taking them for how you're to take them, that's really so important. Um, because we know when we have the short period of time with the doctors, we wanna use that time wisely. Make sure your blood pressure is checked regularly. 
If you do have high blood pressure, make sure you take your medication appropriately and um, keep it under control. Know your cholesterol numbers, like Bonnie said. Know your HDL, the good cholesterol, the LDL, the lower cholesterol, and particularly those triglycerides. The knowledge in those is power. Uh, if you have diabetes or keep your blood sugar check to make sure you don't have diabetes and follow through with that as well. If you smoke, please stop. Please find, there's all kinds of programs out there. I know it's very difficult, but that's a number one for a lot of things, stroke as well. Uh, eat for your heart health. Eat healthy, um, you know, uh, limit your, you know, you most of you know all this. Uh, the big rage now is plant-based foods and eating more plant-based. We have, we know for many diseases, eating a plant-based um, diet is much healthier for us. But you have to have that meat, have a lean piece and have it every once in a while. Don't deprive yourself. Nobody's going to stick with, with um, you know, toe in the line every single minute of the day. Get regular physical activity. Um, for seniors, they have the silver sneakers. You can join the Y for free. Try to do something um, a little bit every day. Those, those 10,000 steps, but, you know, try to do that. Just uh, if you have a monitor or just for 30 minutes a day, do a little something. Even if you're standing doing the dishes, you know, do some calisthenics, move your legs around. The body's meant to move. So that, the other part too then is with that, the component is to keep your weight, that, um, that would keep your weight healthy. Make sure you uh, know the signs and symptoms of a heart attack. Don't ignore them. If something feels funny or something feels off, like Bonnie suggested, stop, um, get some, some help. If you have to call 911, that's okay. They don't, if they don't transport you, it's okay, but it, at least you know. The other thing I would say is if it's pretty sure you're having a stroke or a heart attack or any of those symptoms, do not drive yourself or get somebody to drive you because they're gonna be nervous, you're nervous. If you have trouble, they don't have the equipment or oxygen or ability to help you and the time really helps. The last thing I would mention is stress. Um, and for myself personally, with, with my cancer journey, I think stress plays such an important um, role in our lives, unfortunately. Um, it's, it's everywhere, right? Uh, we're under all kinds of pressure. Then throw in COVID and what we've had to deal with now almost for three years. Um, that, that really does upset the apple cart, I, I believe. And there's um, all kinds of uh, biofeedback here at our church, uh, Reverend Laura holds every Wednesday, we have meditation. You can watch that later if you can't join in at seven o'clock on a Wednesday. Our chair yoga on Tuesday, I think is just valuable. It's, it's more about breathing and stress. We have to take better care of ourselves. And hopefully um, the information that we're giving you and throughout February will be helpful to you. The Narthex table is gonna have um, all kinds of free handouts that you please take, um, menus, information, share them with, with your family or those you love and um, uh, use that information and share it with others. The other um, information or place to get information that I think is really uh, valuable is the Karen Young's Cardiac Heart Awareness Center. It's in St. Luke's Hospital and um, they have free classes, free information, um, cooking classes, uh, exercise classes, discussion classes about redu um, uh, reducing the risk factors for heart disease. It's all free. Uh, in instances, they will give um, uh, rides to the hospital for things, for uh, EKGs or ECHOs, that if you can just walk in there and they are so helpful. Um, and so please, Call on me, I can help you connect with that. I have information for you, just email me or ask me when we're in church if, if you have questions and wanna talk privately about that, I'm here for you. So thank you, Bonnie. We okay. hope this information is helpful and don't be scared, be informed. Thanks for listening. Thank you.